Oh, I know why. Give me a sec here. All right. How we doing, people? Um, can someone uh, turn off their mic and let me know they hear me? Say, say, hello. Oh, amazing mic. See, see, there's the comments I need. Um, so to get more structure, uh, second time doing this one, uh, how I'm going to do it is I'm going to quickly run through the shakedown, those, those ideas. I'll run through every chart pretty quickly. It's not too, too many to go over. And then if anyone wants to type anything in the chat, uh, charts they want me to go over themselves, I'll just do that right after so we can have some more uh, structure. And, we'll, and if you got any questions, just type them into the side too. Um, <clears throat> all right, without further ado. Um, so let me share my screen now. All right, everyone can see the main screen. Someone, someone type a yes. Someone, someone give me something. All right, <laughs> thank you. See, Eric's got my back. None of you guys do. All right, so um, you know, very simply, walking into the market this week, you got to be a little bit hands off. We uh, we saw a pretty steep downside move yesterday. I mean, uh, last week. And you know how how can you have any conviction in either direction after this huge move? You know it's it's very late to the short, but at the same time, you know uh, bulls aren't really given too much uh, accumulation vibes. So you know going to this week very hands off. We got the Fed Wednesday, uh, which is which controls the entire week. So I expect Monday, Tuesday we chop around, and then Wednesday when we get the Fed news, that'll be the crazy fireworks. Um, you know if we continue selling off into the week. It could be one of those things where it's a buying opportunity. You know, when I look at the market now, it's like we've already sold off so much so quickly, 6% down in four days. Uh, you know, tough to get short, tough to get short. You know, I always like to look at the eight day simple moving average and I leave the spy for, you know, overbought and oversold levels. And very simply put, you know, we're far away from that eight day simple moving average. Um, it's up here at 403. We're down trading at 385 in the spy. So just a reversion to the mean. You know, I would expect to move up to get sold off. But, you know, if we sell off into the Fed, that Fed could be a catalyst of, you know, one of those unexpected up moves just just for, you know, uh, supply and demand dynamics. But other than that, I'm not really too gung ho about, you know, any market direction, any 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 market trades, any I'm not coming in Monday trying to buy the dip. I'm not coming in, coming in trying to sell any strength, just kind of more so taking action and, uh, you know, waiting for waiting for the setup. That's why I added to the top of the shakedown. This quote, uh, I saw it on Twitter. Someone posted it. The best traders are those who can sit on their hands while they wait for the right moment to strike. You know, going into this week, uh, you know, Monday right now is not the right moment to strike. So um, let's go through some of these charts. So uh, I'm just going to go through the shakedown. You want to bring it up on your own or whatnot. I'm going to have it up on another screen, but I'm just going to go through these charts. So uh, start off with cell H. So this is what we got to start doing as a group. We got to start making notes of all these upper right-hand corner names. Um, the market will bottom eventually, and these guys are going to be the ones that just explode. I actually saw I saw on Twitter again someone posted um, how Amazon acted during the correction of ninety nine two thousand, and it's really interesting to see um, it topped when it was a market leader. It topped like eight months before the rest of the market did, and then it also uh, bottomed like you know ten months before the rest of the market did. So the names that we're seeing like this, the sell H's, and we'll go through a few of them tonight. These are the ones that are just going to fucking explode, explode, explode through highs uh, when the market does want to stabilize. So we got to start keeping track of these names. And I'm going to start taking a closer look and, and focusing more on these names, um, you know, in the next coming weeks. And that brings us to CYTK. Oh, and, and another note on the sell H. Um, looking at the chart, you know, I was maybe thinking about putting in the chart to buy this one on 150 against this 97. It looks like a decent support buy and it might work out. But probability going into Monday, I'm just not really sure. You know, if 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 it sets up, we get a down open and it looks strong and it gives us that relative strength of the open, then maybe, you know, you try one of those 101.50s, you know, take a bunch off if it gets to the top end of the range. Uh, but that's very, very active. That's for the active trader. I'm waiting for 110 for the most part for this one. CYTK, this is another one that's just, uh, you know, should be on our lists. We, we don't want to see this one go this week. We'd love to see it, you know, flag out a little bit more. Heaven, what's up? I love when people show, show me some camera love. Um, but uh, this CYTK through 55 in time, you know, that's another one that's on the list. This one I just found uh, tonight is DGII. Um, 
I'm, I, so I'm not exactly sure of the company. I was looking them up. They've been on just huge, huge run. The weekly chart shows just how strong this company's been. Um, but they got a nice little, you know, support by setting up right here. Um, you know, you see this mini micro resistance here in this 34. Now it's turning into new support. So I'm gonna, I'll check this one out. This, you know, it's got to be a perfect interest set up to get me to buy it tomorrow. But definitely keep an eye out. Um, going down the list, Consolidated Edison, this ED. So if you guys remember last week, um, before the selling started to happen, you know, the utility stocks looked amazing. You know, we had this ED, we had this DUK. They were all so strong. You know, they gave this initial breakout move and then started to move well, higher. Right. Same with this ED. Some problem, some problem. Whoa. Um, is someone speaking there? Was it me? Oh, is it you speak, say something? Oh, no, you just threw me off. I heard some other voice. No, I mean, feel guys, feel free to speak up. I mean, I, I'd, I'd love to hear someone I was, speak. I was a or not. I'm just sitting back listening. Okay, okay. Um, so I, I'm very curious to see what happens with these utility names because, you know, last week they're so strong, and then that sell-off happened, and these were the first things to get hit pretty hard, and they just gave that strength up. I mean, look at the look at the SPY dead. So, you know, it should be it should be no surprise to see that they sold off, but now it's, you know, do these names – quickly find support do they want to you know show leadership among equities once again or not you know or maybe that was the top they needed um number one thing i'm watching this week is this emph even though i didn't want to make a trade of the week because it's such an actively traded stock where let's say i bought 320 next week next monday when it's setting up you know i'd probably sell a bunch for 330 because i know i'd be using like a 310 stop or whatever that personal that love of the day is but this is a stock i think goes higher for long term I don't have the confidence in it to where I want to buy 323 and give it all the way to 300. I'm going to try to sneakily find an entry for the breakout and sell most into strength if I can find that opportunity. It's just so unbelievably strong. You know, this is in that category of the sell H. Um, EMPH is definitely in that category. So this is the number one thing I'm watching Monday morning. Uh, I don't want to be too gung-ho about anything, though. Again, we got that crazy news Wednesday. Uh, next on the list is LHX. Um, just a huge, huge coil. Uh, you look on the weekly chart when this one does want to, you know, matriculate to the upside. If it does, it, it should be, you know, big breakout, um, you know, in the same sectors as NOC. We'll touch on that soon. But uh, this LHX, nothing yet, but keep it on the radar. NBIX is next. Uh, again, falls in that basket of CELH as uh, ENPH. These guys are just so strong. The market's selling off, but someone's out there buying them. Someone is out there holding these stocks up. So when these things want to go, when this one wants to go through 108.50, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be involved. Unless it's extended to the upside in a major way, I'm going to be involved when it breaks 108.50 because I've been watching buyers hold this thing on for weeks. So then it becomes my job to you know be involved when it triggers. Uh, next up is NOC. This is another one I think we all got to be involved in when it does eventually break these highs. Just, you know, thing will not quit. It's staying within, within 5 10% of its highs um, the entire year. So, you know, this bull flag just gets better and better and better. Um, so definitely keep an eye on that one. And uh, <clears throat> next up, SEDG, these solars. We lit these solars all last week. Here's TAN. Um, TAN doesn't look as good as it once did. Again, before the market sold off, we were, we were looking at it with this kind of setup. And this looked unbelievable. In a trending market, when I see setups happen like this, where it's closing right at resistance, I'm going to buy some end of day and give it to this and give it some room so that I come in the next day. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited about this one setup. It won't get lost. In the scheme of things and then if it does get that gap up um you know then i'm already involved i don't have, have so much pressure about chasing and things like that but again we're not in that environment look what happened since then you know we sell off and now it's still trying to figure itself out uh, but this sedg it's still within this box and then i don't want us to lose sight of what's really going on with this sedg this this huge 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 pattern you know look at a weekly chart you know, massive consolidation. You look at a monthly chart. It's 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 honestly ridiculous what's going on. So when this does want to take this 380 out, you know, massive, massive, massive trade of the year type breakout you can expect in that one. So uh, we gotta keep an eye on that one until until we see that type of action. This LEU is up next. Um, you know, this falls in that basket of uranium names. I love they all they all sold off. Everything pretty much sold off uh, end of the week, but this one is coming into this is I feel like this is a name that I would usually forget about because it doesn't look so pretty right now. This second, uh oh, did I lose some? We still we still got me. I can hear you. All right, cool. I don't hear the stream though. Give me a sec. My uh, my Discord's messing up. All right, 
So um, this LEU yeah. would probably fall in the names of ba- name of baskets of names that I forget about because it doesn't look beautiful. But if you look at it at this point, like if you look at every time it came into the support, like look at it for example, I'm right? Not sharing, pause, pause, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Good. See, that's why I need you having. That's why I'm here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back. All right, so you look at all these times where this LEU is what I got up. And this is the, one of the uranium names. You know, it, it's got this nice cupping formation. Every time it gets to the bottom of this cup, it gets support. And it's always when it doesn't look that great. So look at when this run started right here. Look at it going into the week. You know, if we're just looking at this chart, this looks awful. And what happens? You know, it, it, it runs from 36 to 56 in a couple weeks from there. So now it comes to the bottom of the end of the range once again. Again, not looking great, but it comes out and takes out this 47 with some volume Monday. You know, I'll probably look to buy that one. You know, of course, I'll see what's going on with the rest of the market. But I think this is uh, something I uh, you know definitely want to be active about if I see it setting up. Um, another one on that list is this SWAV, that, that uh, top right list just getting accumulated. You know, nothing to do yet in this name, but we want to keep this on a watch list every single week going forward. This uh, next up is this S-E-S-U-P-N. I actually made this the trade of the week. I, I was about to make this the trade of the week. Just from a technical perspective, it's so beautiful. You know, it's got this huge macro pattern. And then we take that out and we go to a daily chart and it's just coiling, you know, on that resistance level. You know, it takes out this 3550, 3575 area should theoretically just explode. Um, the problem with the name, it only averages about 400K a day. So it's it's pretty thin in that regard. But we want to look out for this name to, out of nowhere, give us a few like 50K prints as it's flagging uh, intraday below this like 3550 area. You know, then we'll be involved with that one. Definitely want to keep a close eye on that SUPN. Uh, and then next up is this Tesla. Um, you know, I feel like a fool for, you know, selling it so early. But again, singles and doubles wouldn't work for me. Um, I, I, I traded this recently. I bought it, you know, on this retest here and I sold it into, you know, this 290 area, v- being very cautious with it, uh, which I'm okay with. Uh, <clears throat> oh, let me get my mic. My video on. Uh, which I'm okay with because um, we've seen so much back and forth action this year. I'm just, I'm just trying to take the PL and run. So again, but, you know, Tesla setting up every time it sets up for these momentum, huge momentum trades, you look at this last base it had, it usually sets up these big runs. So if it can, you know, um eclipses 310 area again i'd like it to go sideways and all these things but tesla is just so momentum based um you would have to expect it to want to retest this area this next what is this 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 350 so uh you 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 buy in this 310 area you then you got to have the thing it has the juice to this 350 which you know tesla never never surprises me uh when it when it does go on those sort of runs and then last up trade of the week ptct just very simple you know, exploded on earnings. What? How long is this base? One, two, three, four, five, six week base. We love that. If this goes at any time next week, I'll, I'll buy. I'll, I'll start to look. First entry fifty four twenty five, and then I'll add over these highs fifty four seventy fifty five wherever that wants to come in. Um, that one's a very simple trade. Very beautiful chart. If you if you think about the um, me and Bennett did that joke around video of uh, like the earnings training. One of the things I said was an earnings flag that was three to six weeks. What does that mean? It means a, a stock that explodes and a name that bases out for three to six weeks. So, um, you know, this name's just been getting accumulated. looks amazing. And uh, if you factor in what the S&P's been doing in that time, uh, this PTCT looks triple amazing. Uh, so so that's it for the shakedown. Again, to, to rehash kind of the main points I, I was talking about. Let's not go into the week gung-ho about new risk. Um, we have the huge Fed meeting Wednesday. All bets are off of Fed meetings. We could rise 10%. We could fall 10% you know, just as easily. The market's so negative right now that nothing would surprise me. Even if, like a move to the upside would not surprise me at all. Uh, I would like to see more downside, a little more capitulation. But again, um, you know, Wild West action right now. Um, do you guys put... Uh, let me check the chat out. See what we got. All right. Stream ended. Is it shit? No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. We can see you. Okay, okay, um, okay. There's a couple charts here. Blake's got a couple if you want me to start calling them out. You want to look at them? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll just go through them. I see them up now. All right, I'll start GK, okay. GKOS. Ooh, love this one. I'll add this to my own watch list. I missed this one. This looks good. It's now it's – uh. here's the tricky part. You got to buy it against – you theoretically have to buy it against this, this new support area, whatever this is, whatever these lows are, 55. So that makes it tricky. If you want to buy it over this resistance, 
at 59. Giving it to 55 is tough. So finding an entry in this one is tricky, but definitely looks good. Uh, keep an eye on the next week. See what the action they give us. MVCR. Um, I don't like. I don't personally like these bottom bases because it takes so long to work out. If if you have that um, outlook of three to six months um, for a trade to work out, then I think this is something you look at. But Blake, knowing you and your time frame, uh, I think you should take this one off the list. Um, nice chart, nice level. It just it needs so much time. And let's say to get to one thirty, it's gonna have to go like this. You know, up, down, up, down, up, down. We're looking for a shorter term trade, so it doesn't really fall in our uh, window. ORA, love this, but wow, I'm surprised to see this. Now, so this remaining so strong is very interesting. We were just talking about the utilities and how they all kind of fell off. This, uh, so now if, if we see the utilities start to pivot tomorrow, the Con Edison, the DUKs, things like that, we should look to buy this OAR. This is clearly the strongest name in the sector. This is a great looking chart. Um, so good shit, Blake. Uh, Run, RUN, another one of the solar names. Again, uh, I don't like the beaten down names as much as let me delete that. As much as you know, something like ENPH, where it's just like, damn, this thing's getting bought like a motherfucker. SED, SEDG, still in the middle of a big range, but you know, it has this overhead level that we like. Whereas this run, uh, what do we know about this chart? We know that this just is a ton of resistance. So I would pick the other solar names over this run. Again, if if the solar names run, this probably runs with the rest of them, but. Yeah, you know, just saying. If I had to pick and choose, uh, HAE similar to this MVCR. Um, I, I just don't like these bottom these bottom charts. Uh, again, what is this? What we got in front of us? Sellers, people who are fucking people who have been trapped, who bought it here, just want to get out. They've been holding it forever. I just want to get the hell out. This hits hundred. I'm getting out. So I'll skip that one. NTCT. Um, uh, I like this buying, but uh, too choppy of a chart right now. No clear level. You know, it's in the middle of this sort of range, I guess. So now it's just sitting here. Nothing on this one yet. We like the big buying, but let this one go for a little bit. Keep it on watch list. All right. So let me stop that. Hey, NOC. Got What's up? I got two for you. Oh, what you got? Uh, CI. First one. Cigna. This looks good. Uh, I hate trading these uh, healthcare conglomerates. The UNHs. Humanas. Yeah. That's personally for me because they're usually grinders. Like this stock, for example, you know, you see it has the uptrend. It's it looks good. I mean, I, I can't hate on this chart. I'm not gonna buy it though, personally. I just I hate trading these huge healthcare names. Um so te good. technically it looks good through two ninety two, but it's just gonna go without me. What else? What is, do you know what happened on this uh regen R E G N? This like No, I up. didn't look it up. I put it on the watch yeah. list. It's not ready yet, but it's like and uh, they came out with all this news about it that JP Morgan thinks it sees 800 bucks soon, things like that. Um, I don't know what the news is. Got to look it up still, but uh, yeah. definitely on the radar soon. Cool. Yeah, those were my two. All right. Uh, Eric, I'm going to peep yours. Wait, what are you saying about this NOC? I stopped out at NOC three separate times in the last few months. Charles still looks strong, so it looks like I stopped in too tight. Last week, I stopped out at below 374. Looks like three four sixty five is a good stop loss. Whatever wants to go. Yeah, Khan, uh, agreed with you on NOC. Um, just waiting, just just waiting. It's, it, it technically hasn't even triggered yet. You know, it gave us these false triggers up here where it takes it out, but really it's like four hundred. It's that beautiful round, even number. Uh, so we got to look at that as the main trigger. All right, Eric, I'm gonna uh, check out your charts now. ACHC um, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Um, you know, it broke out to new highs. So, you know, theoretically, those buyers are still around. I'd like to see it build out a little more. I don't know why. I mean, just, just from the eye test, I want to see it build out a little more sideways before I buy this one through 86. Definitely a good one to keep on the radar. Throw that on the watch list. Uh, Vertex. We talked about this Vertex last week, literally. Look at when we talked about it. Uh, going, And it was the same, same exact setup because I was going over this in the shakedown. I was typing it up and I was like, Vertex did the same exact thing we talked about last week. Um, you know, it looks great on the weekly. Again, I'm going to say the exact same thing. It looks amazing on the weekly. We know what that weekly chart's like. It's just now it's coming off three days. So now we got to wait for a better setup, better entry. If we want to take it long, uh, I'm not buying 295 Monday or Tuesday. So, uh, that's my take on it. If you want to give it to the bottom end of the range, sure. Then it looks good. Uh, we need to wait for a better entry. Um, uh, let's see. What we got AMLX. Oh yeah. What the hell is this thing? What's the average volume? Millions? Ooh, yeah, this looks great through, uh, I don't know what the hell this company does. I've never heard of this chart or ticker or anything, but through 32, keep it on the radar. Uh, I'm going to do a little more research on that one after. That one's, that one's pretty good. 
Uh, oh, and semis, huh? You have to love how it's starting the 66 into new support. You just have to love that from a chart standpoint. Tried the breakout, but you know it went on too too crazy of a run. Too crazy of a run. Went from 44 to 76 very quickly. And now it's trying to consolidate that move. This chart, I feel like, is a lot better than appears to the naked eye, if you will. Where it's, you know, it looks so very choppy and kind of a mess at this range. But really, it's turning the 66 area into such solid, cemented support. You know, it breaks this 69. I got no problem 69 versus 66 in this name. It looks pretty good. Holding up very well. Weekly chart's probably pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, that weekly chart depicts it a lot better than that. Yeah, I like that one, honestly. Um, again, I'll probably steer clear of it. I'm just a little hesitant for new risk, but um, definitely looks okay. Uh, we're on to plug. Oh, Blake, of course. Of course, brother, of course. Uh, plug power, huh? Is Bennett in here? Oh, man, me and Bennett saw our first boss get fucking annihilated in this plug power back in the day. Um, <laughs> hilarious story. He used to be like this this crazy like active shorter. And he he'd always like impress us when we were brand new on the desk. He would and his screen, his big screen, would be on the wall, so we'd all see his all his executions. And he'd be so cocky, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, hit some more short, hit some more short." This thing just kept going on. We lost thirty grand. He almost got fired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we were all just like, "Ooh, like, better not talk now." Uh, but <laughs> all right, so plug thirty bucks. Let me check this plug out. And this is, you know, it's not a terrible, terrible chart. Um, this is, it's sneakily wide. That's the only problem is, uh, you know, this, this new flag it's working out is 25 to 31. That's wide. So just like the size of that flag, if you buy that 31 through it, where do you give it? Maybe you give it to this, this little, this little tight little area right here. Um, you know, so the chart needs more. We're buying it through 31 anyway. Maybe you could try it against this 27 area. I don't like that that much. Um, but um, we want to wait till it, it gets a, a little more work consolidation that 31 area. Then it looks pretty good. I'm not mad at it. Um, plug 31. If you have time, you can check D. Same thing. Same thing. Uh, I don't know if you're a uh, chip. If you're late to the stream, we were talking about this ED. We were talking about this DUK. Um, uh, we were talking about utilities as a whole, and we were also talking about this uh, ORA that Blake brought up. That was that was the nicest of the bunch. So this Dominion, same thing. You know, does it hold this area support? It's like the number one question we're walking into the week concerning utilities. These names could get that strength back, you know, dip, dip a little bit and just rip back so hard. You know, why couldn't they? They were so strong when the market wasn't selling off. They're still staying pretty strong up here. All things considered, SPY was down 6%. These names weren't too destroyed. So I think we got to keep an eye on those utilities to start the week, see if they're reverse. Uh, and the next one is this PGR. PGR, what, what are we looking at? This thing just sold off. We got to uh, see if it holds this 122. Hold this 122 area, and then maybe we got something. But uh, let it come down, test this 122. If it gives you a successful retest, then buy it against that 122. Um, that's all with that one. Sheesh, we're looking at TVTX. Ooh, I like this one. These therapeutic names, you know, we got we to gotta do some research on these therapeutic names. It's been a lot. Uh, I've been, like, popping out and sneaking out. This is a really nice flag. Honestly, through this 28, what's the volume on this thing? Half a million a day? That's not too bad. Yeah, I like this one a lot through 28. It needs some work. I'm not going to buy it through the bottom end of the range because um, these uh, they're, they're very finicky, these bios. But definitely, uh, I need to go through this list. There are some good ones that you guys put off that I missed um, that I'm going to definitely keep on the radar as well. Um, anyone got a... Um, so I went through all the charts. Unless anyone... Any last minute charts? Anyone got some more charts for me or some questions, some thoughts, something you want to say if you want to wonder in uh, economic... Outlook wise, uh, I'm staring at this NOC that we've been looking at for weeks. I know that Khan mentioned that you got stopped out like three times, and I'm just kind of thinking like, what's the best way to execute this this trade because it's such a macro setup um, to like avoid getting stopped out three times in a month. I feel like the ideal trade or the ideal way to take this is to go pretty light if you're going to try to buy the breakout, and then. Look to add when it actually confirms like a strong break through this 500. Yeah. So I feel like if not, you're just gonna you're gonna get trapped. And like as you can see, that's kind of what's happened three times since you know beginning of August. Oh uh, yeah. What I mean, mean, I definitely agree. It's if, if you know it makes a move straight up tomorrow towards that 495. You know, and it, I'm probably not gonna buy any. So it's more of I'm hoping it sets up more. 
right now the, yeah. what's been working is buying off support lightening the load into that resistance level and uh mm -hmm. trying to take it from there where we did really well with it was when jay called this what was that 475 out you know that, that was and then we, we were unloading this retest holding some stock that we got stopped out on but that ended up being the best um execution was was going off support right now the charts not giving us anything but right now the market's not giving us shit either so uh i think we gotta you know be more aggressive with this one when it puts in a firm support level and then take it from there uh but yeah i agree with you just buying highs and and praying isn't the best strategy in this market especially so you know we'll see how it sets up i think it just it's just got to be you know more of a priority in 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 the charts we're looking at it's just such a good looking chart yeah um all right my ass still gotta go to my ass still has to go to trader joe's so that's terrible some some old ass shit on sunday i used to get drunk <laughs> yeah trader joe's is lit though yes yeah, super super lit it actually is like one of my favorite places and now i <laughs> now i get like what the chicken fried rice like the, the frozen one highly recommend okay all right good to know all right uh <laughs> oh we last minutes last minute charts I got ice <laughs> Trader Joe's comments. I got ice cream sandwich at Trader Joe's today with all the chocolate chips. Oh, that's a great tip. That's actually the best tip I heard all all, uh, all review here. <laughs> Trade of the week, ice cream sandwiches. Ice cream Trader sandwiches, Joe's. yeah. Yeah, talk about getting your money's worth for trading experts. <laughs> um, Blake said it's hard to hear you have. Um, all right, so with that, let's wrap it up. Uh, we'll talk tomorrow in the morning, guys. Good shit. Uh, let's, uh, let's remember, let's not be... Uh, to gung ho Monday morning with the risk. We got a very tough setup we're walking into tomorrow. All right. And with that, guys, Later, talk man. to you tomorrow. Later.